It was long in coming. I expected that they would remove him the way they removed his grandfather. Not because he had done anything wrong, because he was certainly too radical for the traditional establishment. I don't think it is just about his governor hating him or anything of that nature. I think that across the north, they are gener generally frightened of a traditional ruler who is outspoken and who, because he is respected by many people, can influence the way people think about society. His ideas are not traditional in a traditional environment. If Nigeria were lucky to have had traditional rulers speaking or talking like that over the past 40 years of our history, we would have a wonderful country. Oh. The thing is, he himself breaks his own rules sometimes, but he has a regular sensible 20th century, 20th century man's approach to the development of society. He, he, does not, he does not pretend that he is not an aristocrat from an aristocratic background. I can hold that against him because uh, my grandfather, my grandfather was, a, was the only half of my, of my hometown. But I certainly would not, would not put, I certainly would not put my republicanism aside to support that position. But you see, to speak as he is doing, fr from the height he has attained, a height which he fought for, for from, his, oh. from his babyhood, is a sign of somebody from whom great changes can be expected. They may have unlocked a journey that they would never be able to control. If the man chooses to go beyond just being a traditional ruler, he can make life impossible for all those who have removed him. Not necessarily by, by becoming a politician himself, because he could become that. He could choose to participate in electoral politics. I, rem I remember that African, African leader in Southern Africa, that uh, prince who married an Oyibo, came back home and insisted he would run for an election. Oh. And he managed to create a wonderful country. I mean, when you look at uh, Southern Africa, it is the only country that has never experienced military rule. Now, in his own case, in his own case, he's a very, he's a very conscientious objector to the way they have run the North for ages. Look, how can you have a society in which up to 30 million are not just out of school, but are really, properly speaking, unemployable? Because the story of the North of Nigeria is of a people who could be great producer, producers, helping to increase the productivity of the people and taking care of more than, more than the population of Nigeria. But they are kept almost as educable, uneducable ruffians that you can treat any way you like. Well, we have now entered the season where it appears those uneducable ruffians are buying guns becoming ruffians, real ruffians, and bandits, and kidnappers, who can make demands on the society that we are not anticipated by their traducers. If we think we have a future that is not dependent on those, on those kids with Kalashnikovs, we are deceiving ourselves. There are many, and they are reprievable. They can be saved from that line of action and living. But we don't have leaders who imagine it as a task they must perform. There's no reason for, ha for us to have such a large population of uneducated and unskilled people. We today have the means to alter their lives and turn them into normal citizens and human beings. But we don't have leaders who think of it in that, in that manner. And so when Sanusi speaks for them, he's actually speaking for people who might actually 
not allow his class to have peace. But it is the wisest thing to do, to think of how to take care of them so that we will have a future that has harmony in it. Our people are not bad people. But when you refuse to educate or you deliberately miseducate and go out of your way to treat normal human beings as dispensable, no, you are creating the basis of a wild cat kind of, not revolutionary, but simply and that kick response to the way the world works. I, I am sure that when you talk about such things these days, everybody links it to just the terrorist wave across. Uh, wave. It is not some, just something across anywhere. Nigeria has been too rich for so long to have a population that is that way. I mean, some people will tell you that the people who did not go to school are Hausa, not Fulani. It doesn't matter whether they are Hausa or Fulani. The fact is that if we gave them the skills and the education to function as normal members of a good society, they are, they are bound to be great producers. They have greater IQ than many of the big men we have in office. But since they've never been given an opportunity, they are behaving the way people of their, of their level of education must behave. As for the guns that they are, they are carrying, some of those guns were bought for many of them by those intended to use them for nefarious purposes. But as they will soon discover, once violence begins in an environment, it doesn't move only in one direction. Those who bought the guns might be the ones who will suffer. And many of them are already unable to go home to, to their, to their normal way. areas of domicile. Look, this is a beautiful country. We can actually turn it into any, any kind of country we want. But we must have to take care of those who are making it happen this way. Nigeria need not be a country of terrorists and terrorists.